The verses read, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? I want to talk today on the subject, the cost of discipleship. The cost of discipleship. Dear God, we thank you for just another chance to share on this Sunday morning. Chance to be able, dear God, to preach the word. A chance to be able, oh God, to hear from heaven. Dear God, we ask you to grant us today the preaching power that we need to go forward. That you might get honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. The cost of discipleship. My brothers and my sisters, we're living in a day and a time where there is a cost associated to everything that we buy and to everything that we achieve or are able to obtain. There's a cost for living in that apartment that condo or that two-story home on the hill. The cost in this society is called a mortgage or a rent payment. Make your payment every 30 days or so and you will have one last thing that will keep you from enjoying a good nice rest. But if you start missing your payments or say I'll take that money and go buy me a new suit or a new dress with matching hat and shoes to go with it. Then eventually you will be homeless and outside. Or even worse, you might end up living again with mama and dad or grandma all over again. That car you love to drive fast down the highway probably has a promissory note attached to it. And if you don't pay that, there's a man called the repo man who will come in your yard on your job and pick it up with his tow truck if the payments get too far behind for the bank to accept as being reasonable compensation or for an adequate performance of the contract that you signed with the bank. How about that student loan that you signed for and that is drawing interest but was deferred <laughs> while you attended college as an undergraduate or graduate student and now has payments that are beginning six months after you graduate. After you turn that tassel to the side and throw your cap up in the air. Oh my goodness, what about that man or woman that treated you like a king or queen when you were dating them? Or while you were shacking up all those years and now revealed his or her true coat of colors and act like they forgot what loving you right is all about. Oh, y'all yeah, gonna listen to me today. I got to call it like it is. Oh, I wonder, can I get a witness of that? Why am I saying all of this? Well, I'm saying all of this to let you know that there's a cost associated with everything. There's a cost associated with everything in life, whether it be small or big, seen or sometimes not seen. <laughs> Nothing is truly free of cost. Church understand that that free slurpee at 7-Eleven was a national promotional tool to get you into 7-Eleven and to taste how good their slurpees are and to get you to come back again on another day. And oh yeah, by the way, they want to make sure it's a hot day when they offer you the free slurpee that you'll see ooh, it tastes real, real good because somebody thirsty. Oh, well, the company really wants you to say his whole thing happened for 7-Eleven. <laughs> Church, there's a cost attached to everything because everything has a reality check somewhere along the way. Cost, if you would, is simply defined as the amount of money, time, effort, 
etc. required to achieve an end. In other words, what will I have to expend or give to achieve my desired goal? What will it take for us uh, to get where we need to go or where we desire to be? Mm -hmm. Church, church, I want to say this real quickly. Uh, church, I want you to understand something real quickly. Mm -hmm. What will that church and fellowship hall really cost? Mm -hmm. It will not be built for free. Mm -hmm. Can I say that one more time? Mm -hmm. It will not be built for free mm -hmm. unless we get out and do it ourselves mm -hmm. with our own hands. Mm -hmm. But then we're still going to have to pay for the cost of materials. Mm -hmm. There still is a cost. And then we're going to have to get someone to show us how to finish the project. Mm -hmm. Unless we are engineers ourselves. <laughs> are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. A car cannot run without gasoline. A student will not adequately learn where there is no teacher. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. The hands on the mechanical clock. My God. The hands on the mechanical clock will not move without gears moving together to turn the hands forward. Mm -hmm. The hands won't move by themselves. Yeah. It's always something in the background that's moving it along. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The church does not operate on its own power. Right. For there is a power greater than us yeah. that moves the program of God along. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. Are you listening to me today? Thusly, I can surmise from all these examples that unless we are able to obtain some type of salvational or saving grace from God the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ the Son implemented in our hearts by the Holy Ghost and the third person of the Holy Trinity, then we are just wandering creatures with lost souls and no means by which to obtain an eternal abode in the heavenly. Consequently, we are left, if we don't get right, to perish and to suffer eternal damnation in a place called hell. <clears throat> where Jesus Christ said, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, and the worm dieth not. Church, there is a high cost for discipleship. Right. Let me just take a moment to, de to define what discipleship really is. Discipleship is being on board or being in line with the teacher of the faith in which we are disciples. Are you listening to me? Disciples are followers of a teacher, a school of religion, a learning, etc., an art, whatever it be. We as Christian believers in Christ are disciples of Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? We as Christian believers in Jesus are, are disciples of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thusly, as his disciples, we should follow his examples right. and follow his words mm -hmm. as laid out by the Holy Writ or the Holy Word of God, which is the 66 canonical books called the Word of God. Church, listen to me. <laughs> Salvation is free. Because Jesus paid the price on Calvary's old rugged cross. But to be one of his true disciples or followers of his, it will cost us something to follow the man called Jesus. Because many have started out on this thing and have not completed the course. Because it got too tough somewhere along the way. Because they had to give up something somewhere along the way. Because sin got in their way somewhere along the way. And they decided, I don't want to follow no more because I want to do my own thing. But Christ said, if you follow me, you're going to have to take up a cross and follow me. Are you, are you listening? Are, are you listening today? So it's going to cost us a high cost to be in line or in fellowship with Jesus. Well, I can hear someone asking the question, Pastor Freeman, if salvation is free and Jesus paid it all for the lost sinner, then why do you say there's a high cost for discipleship? Well, Pastor Freeman did not write the Bible. All right, all right. Nor is he a propagator or progenitor of any new philosophy or religion. Right, yeah. 
Can I say that again? So that you might understand? Pastor Freeman did not write the Bible. Nor am I a progenitor of anything, nor, nor am I a propagator of any new religion or philosophy. All I do is preach what's in the book. You can either accept it or reject it. It's your choice. But you live with whatever choice that you make. But my job as the pastor is to tell you what's in the book. And it's up to you to do what you will with it. But see, Jesus made it clear in our text today. In chapter 9 of Luke's gospel, verses 23 and 24. He said unto them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. And take up his cross daily. And take up his cross daily. And follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall do what? Save it. Number one, Jesus says, deny himself or herself. Number two, he says, take up his or her cross on a daily basis. Number three, he says, to lose his life or her life in order to gain it is what's going to happen when you start following the man named Jesus. Right. Jesus tells his disciples to deny himself. Mm -hmm. Understand that in verse 18 of the same chapter that Jesus was also praying as he often did to his father in heaven and disciples were with him. He wanted to hear who the people said that he was. Then he wanted to hear who the disciples thought he was. Mm -hmm. He wanted the disciples to realize and verbally acknowledge that he was the Christ of God. Verse number 20. He was the Christ or he was in Greek the God with us. The Christos. Next he charged them to tell no one so that he could finish his mission. His mission was to suffer many things. His mission was to be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes. His mission was to go to the cross and be slain for the sins of the world. Amen. And then finally, his mission was to be revived on the third day. Uh -huh. Just as he said he would. Verse 22, yet the master who is the captain of our faith takes our time before going to the cross to outline the high cost of discipleship. Mm -hmm. Deny yourself. That means Jesus Christ comes first. Amen. Your family and church come next. Mm -hmm. Your neighbors and your enemies come after that. Yeah, right. You come last. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me today? Yeah. You come last. Yeah. You come last. Yeah. Christ come first. Mm -hmm. Anyone that says he's following God and put yourself first, you can't be following the Jesus that I know. Amen. You're following someone you made up to, 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 to do what you want them to do. And to be who you want them to be. But Christ says, put me in the kingdom first. And all these things will be added unto you. Seek my kingdom first. Before you start planning all that stuff you're going to do, seek the kingdom of God first. All right. All right. Before you start talking about what you're going to do and what you ain't going to do, seek the kingdom of God first. Mm -hmm. Talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to the master. See, don't he give you an answer one way or the other. Mm -hmm. He is first. Mm -hmm. We are last. In other words, give him glory for all things. And he will bless you abundantly. Amen. Somebody used to say when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Right. And I still believe that when we praise God, he'll bless us. Yes. Number two, take up your cross daily. daily. Jesus tells the disciples and all who will listen, take up and not put down your cross. Understand that my cross is not your cross. That's right. And your cross is not my cross. Are right. oh, you listening to me? Amen. 
I don't know what your cross is, and you don't know what my cross is. But whatever the things are that the Holy Spirit revealed to you as a cross or something that seems too heavy to bear, then just call on Jesus. Right. And see when he help you be able to make it through your darkest hour. Yeah. When it seems like you just can't make it through life, just call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. He will <coughs> carry you through. Yes, your cross might be a multiplicity of, of things. But Jesus says quite clearly, pick up that cross and follow me. Right. Pick up that cross and continue on with the journey. Stop dropping the cross every time something happens and say I quit and I give up and I can't take it no more. But that's the time you got to say, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If I withdraw thy hand from me, where shall I go? Can't go to nobody but God. The time we spent crying and belly aching is the time we can be calling on God in prayer and letting God answer our problems. Pick up that cross. Might have a wayward husband or a wayward wife. Might have children who won't act right no matter what you try to do. That's all right. Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Might have sickness or poverty or moral vices, lack of confidence, inability to witness for the Lord's property. Pick up the cross and don't put it down. Every time something goes wrong, you just got to start calling on the Lord right. and ask the Lord to carry you through. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Don't put the cross down every time it seems to get just a little bit too heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't put it down every time it seems like you just can't make it because you've done all you know how to do. That's right. But he said when, you, when, you, when, you, when you've done all you can do, just continue to stand and see if God won't bless you. And then when you've done all you can do, stand some more and see if God won't bless you. And when you've done all you can think you can do, stand some more and see if God won't bless you. See if God won't help you carry it through. Like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who carried a physical cross. We don't have a physical cross made of wood, but we got spiritual crosses that we carry from day to day. And even when Jesus carried his physical cross and it, it got too heavy, they called on a man named Simon Serene and told him to pick up that cross. Right. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm going to hit you with something. Pick up that cross, Negro. Mm -hmm. Pick up that cross, black man. Well, right. oh, y'all don't know your history. <laughs> he was from Africa. Pick it up. Follow me. What I'm saying, God always got a ram in the bush. Yes. You think everything is done. You gave up and ran and decided to go the way. Just when you started running, God was getting ready to bless you with something and you gave up and quit. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. You quit before the job was done and then you're wondering why you ain't getting blessed. Amen. And all the time, God said, just stand still and let me do my thing. Because I'm God. And I got all the blessings. And all I want you to do is stop being so hard headed and take some time out and give me some glory. Amen. Can I get a witness today? Amen. Just call on my name every once in a while and I'll bless you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Somebody said, Free, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Jesus Christ, right. Son of the living God. Yeah. I'm talking about my Savior. And my Lord. I'm talking about the man that died on Calvary's old rugged cross. Talk about Jesus. Jesus. He says, Follow me. Follow me. Lose your life and you'll save it when you follow Jesus. But if you save your life by running after the devil, you'll lose it. Oh, y'all better get this understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. Running after everything but not seeking the face of God and then wonder why you've been cursed? Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody about help me today. Mm -hmm. 
Paul said, present your body a living sacrifice on a daily basis. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Which is your what? Reasonable service. Which is your reasonable fellowship. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I transform my mind, Brother Deacon? I've got to get in this book and let God transform it. Right. 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 Reading the comic strip won't transform my mind. It just make me more warped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Yeah. Huh? Right. If I spend more time worrying about what Dr. Phil said and what God said, I'll never get this thing right. right. Huh? All right. All right. All right. Now T.D.J. said, I'm a psychologist. I got me a TV show. I'm looking at what God said about it. Are y'all listening to today? All right. Amen. All right. Oh, Oprah didn't say that. I just said written in the book of Oprah. <laughs> but it's that God's word. Oh, God, I got to call it like it is. That's right. That's right. And a man named Canaan West, of all people, writes and rewrites the book of Genesis and takes our God name and put his name in everywhere God name was. A fool said in his heart that there is no God. You want to put yourself over God and think God not going to make you pay in the end? I've got something to tell you, my baby. God will make you answer. Yes, yes, Am I right about it? Yes, he will make you answer after a while. You may get away with it now for a little while, but after a while, payday is coming after a while. Amen. Oh, my God. Right. We got away with a whole bunch of junk. Thinking God didn't see us. We were slipping and sliding, hiding, ducking and dodging, creeping under the bridge, doing everything we thought God didn't see us. But after a while, the Holy Ghost will put it off. Those things done in secret will be put out in the open. But God has a revealing light that sees all sin. And God says, Sin, I've got to punish it. Ain't no way you're going to walk in heaven with that sin. You're going to get whipped when you get up to the kingdom. Amen, somebody. Ain't no way in the world flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. That's right. That's right. Won't do it. Got to be born again. Blood and by the water. Jesus said, lose your life. Lose those old devilish ways. Lose those old evil and ungodly ways. And come follow Jesus. He will give you eternal life. Mm -hmm. Paul said it succinctly. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any woman, any boy, any girl be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become anew. Church, get your act together. Because we as disciples of Jesus Christ has got to follow God. And follow his command. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or lose his soul and be cast away? I don't want to gain the whole world and be seen as some dynamic preacher pastor living in a nice house, driving a nice car, wearing the finest clothes, and lose my soul and bust hell wide open. I don't want to be in that position. But I want. I want my works to speak for me. Right. When I'm dead and gone. Right. Am I right about it? I want, I want God's work to speak for me. Great God Almighty. I don't want to be lost in the devil's burning hell with the eternal place of a bowl in hell. All of us need to examine ourselves and see if we are Carrying our cross daily. See if we are denying ourselves. And see if we are really following Jesus. Some say they follow Jesus. But when Jesus asks for a commitment, you say, well, Jesus, I, I don't know about that. Uh, let me think about that. I got to pray over the Lord. I don't, I don't know. But he already told you, I want you to do A, B, C, and D. And you say, oh, Lord, I don't know. It might be just a little too heavy for me. But God never put more on us than we can bear. Am I right about it? He's never given us more than we can carry. But understand, there was a man named Jesus. His name is still Jesus. 
He paid it all. Yes, he did. All to him I owe. Uh -huh. She left a crimson stain. Yes, but he washed right. white as snow. Yes, Jesus went to the cross, mm -hmm. stayed there from the third to the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. They ridiculed him. Mm -hmm. They spat on him. Mm -hmm. Called him everything <laughs> but a child of God. Yes, he died till his son stopped shouting. Mm -hmm. He died. Am I right about it? He died the death of a criminal hanging between two old dirty thieves. He died till the graves sprung wide open and folks started walking through the streets of Jerusalem. The soldiers pierced him in the side, laid him in Joseph's bar tomb. But early, one Sunday morning, early, I say early, one Sunday morning, on the first day of the week, Christ got up with all power in his hands. And ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? I said, ain't that good news? I've got a seat in the kingdom of God. Ain't that good news? I've got a home over in glory. Ain't that Good news. I said, Jesus is worthy. worthy. He is worthy, worthy to be praised. Anybody ever took some time out to just praise the Lord when you really didn't feel like praising him, but you knew how good he had been? He stopped the thieves from taking all your money out of the bank, and that ought to be a praise report. Am I right about it? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He stopped the waters from flooding you out. Ain't God good? Somebody sung a song and said, I want to be a follower, a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. I want to walk in the newness of God. So let me be a follower of Christ. Somebody asked a question, what do I have to do? One might ask a question, what do I have to say? Somebody asked a question, how do I have to walk each and every day? Tell me what does it cross to carry the cross? Let me be a follower of Christ. A follower of Christ. A disciple of the kingdom of God. See God first. All things will be added unto you. God is able. To do all things. all things. Makes no mistakes. Does all things well. Jesus is. The God. Of our salvation. Praise the Lord. Dear God we thank you today for this word. We thank you dear God for the. Anointed of the Holy Ghost. Now God let your word sing truth in our hearts. Let us understand that we've got to take up your cross daily. Deny ourselves and follow you. You did not say it would be easy. But nothing worth having is easy. You told us, God, we've got to continue in the faith. Can't drop out every time something goes wrong. we got to stand right there and let you do your work. In that time and in that hour, we feel like we can't go no further. <coughs> and you'll push us on just a little bit further. <coughs> and strengthen us. And empower us to witness to the world and let them know that Jesus is the God of our salvation. Thank you, Lord. For life, health, and strength. Thank you. For all you've done, all you're going to do. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord. Teach us how to be disciples of the kingdom of God. To understand what you expect of your disciples. Lord, we thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Thank you for raising up Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, for all you've done, all you're going to do. This is a prayer of Mount Zion Baptist Church. 
Hear our prayer, God. We're going to follow you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.